Have you noticed how some in the media just suck up to some politicians? I'm struck just in your presence. Struck in her presence. Looking you in the eye with your passion that you are displaying. Republicans are treated differently. If, if I may finish just answering, well, let me this, just, is, this is really I, I'm gonna, important. I'm going to go ahead and interrupt you here. On the DOJ are you comfortable and the with FBI, that term? Let's just, I mean, just, we have just seen... Just on my question, though, Governor. Excuse me. Aggressive interviews are easy to notice, but some bias is more subtle. For example... What a great campaign! The media have always covered Iowa caucus victory speeches. We're going to want to listen in very, very closely. Thank you, Iowa. But this year, when Trump won... Thank you. We love you all. CNN cut away from his speech. Here he is right now under, under my voice. You hear him repeating his anti-immigrant rhetoric. Actually, no, Jake. You hear him. We don't. CNN wouldn't let us actually listen to Trump and decide for ourselves. MSNBC showed none of Trump's speech. Rachel Maddow said... We will let you know if there's any news made. Maddow says it's not responsible to broadcast Trump live because he lies so much. But we reporters can point that out instead of cutting away when he talks. I've repeatedly reported on Trump's lies. Trump lies even about unimportant things like the crowd at his inauguration, the ratings of his TV show. But Biden lies too. Here he lies about doing well in law school. Ended up in the top half of my class. Biden now concedes he did not graduate in the top half of his law school class. He also lied when he said, I have never discussed with my son or my brother or anyone else anything having to do with their businesses, period. I shouldn't be surprised that the media treat Republicans differently. For every Republican in newsrooms, there are 10 Democrats. And now NPR has actually hired this woman to be its new CEO. She not only tweeted, Trump's a racist, but during BLM looting said, sure, looting is counterproductive, but it's fine because what they're looting comes from a system of oppression. She's now the boss of government-funded radio? Yes. Here's another example. The governor of Texas refuses to give in to federal law. Recently, reporters suddenly got very upset about rule of law. The governor of Texas refuses to give in to federal law. The media can't believe that Texas politicians put up a fence and won't remove it even after the feds told them to. But when it comes to sanctuary cities, the tone is very different. Communities that shield undocumented immigrants by not reporting offenses to immigration enforcement. They choose not to follow federal immigration laws. They simply choose not to follow the law. They don't refuse like Texas does. The governor, the governor of, of Texas, Texas refuses, refuses to, give to give in to federal, to federal law. law. Finally, the way the media labels politicians is just biased. Argentina's new president is a libertarian who promises to take a chainsaw to big government. So the media call him far right. Far right radical. Far right Javier Millet. Far right Javier Millet. Far right libertarian Javier Millet. At least she calls him libertarian, but Libertarians aren't far right. Most of us support ending wars, free trade, gay marriage, and all sorts of things far from far right. The late supports legalizing the sale of human organs. Maybe you oppose organ markets, but it's not far right. Conservatives are more likely to oppose organ sales. The shallow media just label anyone who doesn't agree with them right wing. Argentina elected a right wing former TV host. Far right. Far right and Trump-like. Donald Trump of Argentina. He makes Trump almost look like a conventional political candidate. He is nothing like Trump. Economist Daniel DiMartino points out that Malay's policies are very different from Trump's. The only thing that's similar to Trump is that he went against the establishment. He's funny in his speeches, he's charismatic, he has crazy hair, but that's it. I mean, this is a guy who's for free trade. This is a guy with very set on principles, who's very smart on, on economics. The media eagerly cover protesters who oppose Malays cutting the size of government. Thousands are attending at demonstrations opposing his drastic cuts to public spending. Media call most any budget cut drastic, slash and burn, astronomical, draconian. But at least in Argentina, the proposed cuts are big. A lot of people don't like this. Unions are protesting. In Argentina, it's very popular to protest and block streets. It's the second protest against him this month. But President Malay did something different because some union members get welfare payments. 
he said that anybody who blocks a street illegally will lose all welfare benefits. Guess what happened? No streets were blocked. Who knew that protesters blocking streets could be stopped by threatening their government handouts? You won't hear it from the leftist media. Libertarians get trashed. Republicans get interrupted and their speeches cut off. But Democrats largely get a pass, even if you can't tell what they say. The beer brewed here, it is used to make the brew beer here in this refinery. Oh, Earth Rider, thanks for the Great Lakes. But there is some good news. Today, more people ignore leftist media. CNN's primetime viewership fell behind the History Channels recently. More people now get their news from independent journalists who publish in places like Substack and YouTube. Like us. It's a good trend because we're more thoughtful than the silly people on TV. Mr. President, what did you order? Chocolate, chocolate chip. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Our independent journalism isn't cheap, so if you want to help, click that button.